Outrocast. Jeff, uh, how's your day going aside from media people asking you the same questions over and over and over again? Well, no one's asked me that question. You know, it's um, this is really good. I'm happy with everything going on in the world to be talking about Shiny Vale. Honestly, it's a great, great uh it's great to be able to talk about the show anyway, you know, after the strike is over and it's great to be talking to people who have seen it. And it's just great to be focusing on, on, on the fantasy world when the real world sometimes isn't uh, looking so great. Well said. I had the pleasure of getting you on a round table about a year and a half ago for season one. Now, when did you know that there was going to be a season two? So I think we knew, I think we knew in season one was in March. And I think like after probably like the th- third or fourth episode aired and i think that's the plan this year too wow okay so you were able to keep the secret for a little while before variety or hollywood reporter one of those broke that hey it's coming back yes we 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 did i honestly it's so it's so weird to me that this show hasn't aired yet because we finished in december like it's like people asking me questions and we're right now candidly stars let us put together a, a room to just map out what a season three would be so like this is this like season season two i always said like season two makes season one look like down abbey and season three is just that on just like i'm drinking celsius right now and that season three is just strap yourself in so um yes there's there's i had to be reminded uh what was in in season two um and um yes i i love it i'm so excited I'm, I'm so excited the timing of it and and uh you know that we're airing in the season even though i candidly did not want to wait this long it, it turned out being a, a good thing for the show i think well to your credit celsius is the healthy energy drink do you have the endorsement for it yet I do not, but I think I just got it. And I think that uh, maybe uh, you and uh, Astro and Peltrowitz could, um, <laughs> could, could go yeah. on tag team this. Yes, the healthy alternative. The I won't show you the six empty cups of coffee here. Or, or the tea. But anyway, uh, so if we can talk about your back career for a second, you yes. wrote on a lot of shows, wrote Ender Story, edited Ender Produced on a lot of things that were instrumental to me as a young man. Oh, and good. Duckman being one of them. Now, when did you kind of realize that Duckman was going to be a great part of your resume, not just some lame or cartoon kind of thing? And the reason I say that, because most of that cast has never stopped working. So, you know what? I would, I would it, first of all, no one has ever asked me that question before. People ask me about the wild thornberries, thornberries, which I did not write, which I have credit for. People like, we're going to spend this interview talking about the wild thornberries, which is related to my time on Duckman. Duckman, I would say, is the opposite of what you just said. I really assumed Duckman was my second job. And I really assumed that Duckman was going to be like, we were like, we were going to, this is the new Simpsons and, and Reno and Osborne who created it, like we read it. And you were like reading, a, you were, when you read the script, you were reading, you know, I was, I was 26 years old and, you know, fresher. I was closer to being an investment banker than I was to being a writer. I was, and I was just reading this and I'm like, oh my God. And I grew up on TV. I grew up, was raised, you know, in New York on TV and, and sitcoms. And you just read this and just like, I just remember one line said, cut to, and then the next thing is the chase. And I was like, oh my God, I just loved how that wrote and it really expanded it expanded my mind and i so i thought that like i thought the show was going to go forever thankfully it didn't because then i got on friends yeah. um but i loved it and i will say this when anybody asks and most people don't i will say that that was as instrumental uh, in in my growth it allowed me to write shining veil as much as anything else and that was 30 years ago you know, just because, or maybe maybe twenty six years ago, um, because of the the level of writing and the nuance and the 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 fact that it was grounded in family, even though it was crazy, um, you know, I was sad that we had to leave. It was just that it was on USA Network and they would air yeah. it. At, you know, they would after WWF. Yeah, but sometimes it would air at like ten twelve and yeah. like. How do you set your, and back then you were setting your, you know, your VCRs for 10, 12, which no one knew how to do. Um, so again, it was, everything happens for a reason. I got to go on Friends right after that. But I, 
I love that writing that it was that was like really liberating. And in fact, I don't I didn't have that experience of being that liberated to write really for another, you know, 20 something years uh, when when I created Trial and Error, which I got to have fun with. And I realized that they're key with things. your sibling, mind you. Uh, so yeah. now there's two successful writer fan, uh, producers in the family that must have I, driven the parents crazy. Uh, you know, I people are like, wow, that must have been a funny house. I said, like, if you know what causes a sitcom writer to happen, it's not such a funny house. But, times two. Um, yes, times two. So my sister and I are now, you know, we're best friends. And and uh, yes, she's fantastic and, and um, you know, love her. And, you know, it's either you either create two serial killers or two sitcom writers. And thankfully, uh, we get two sitcom writers out of it. So as we come close to, to wrapping up, speaking of serial killers, Shining Veil vale, season two, you allude to season three's even possible. Uh, very few cases does it happen that the next season's even talked about before the new season has even started airing. So congratulations on that end. And right. that's not that we have not gotten officially, we have not gotten a pickup. I'm hoping that season two does well. I'm it's it's just because that's where my mind is now. And I'm like very once I get into something, I very it's actually fun talking to people about season two because it brings me back, even though you know we wrapped it in December. And, you know, it just brings me back and, you know, you go on stage and, and we have such a great set designer, like it, you wouldn't know it, but the first episode, the pilot was shot in an actual house. And after that, they rebuilt that house on four stages, three stages at Warner Brothers. And you wow. go into that house and you're like transported. And it's even so scary, like Greg Kinnear would take you around the corner and then jump and you'd be scared. And, and it's just it's a very immersive experience. I, I I just love it, and I love the cast and and my writers and directors, and it's it's special. Well, my final question before I let you go is: What's the breakdown in the writers' room of horror slash drama writers versus comedy writers? Because the show obviously melts together genres. So it is half and half. There's we only had in the first season. I was only allowed two writers: one comedy writer and one uh drama writer and and i made a um i made a decision that i was i only have uh, women directors uh i only had women writers up until this year they're still predominantly women i have one uh, uh staff writer who's a who's a guy and i have um one comedy writer three horror writers because i know comedy and i don't know horror as well and then i have one crossover writer but it is i was saying this before when the horror writers talk about their references, the comedy writers are look like their Zoom screen is frozen. They're just like, like glaze over. You could tell that they're checking their phones. And then when the comedy writers talk about, you know, comedy, um, the horror writers have nothing. There's, there's, it's so weird how siloed it is and how the references are so different. But like, I, it got me to watch a lot of horror films. But it's, it's very, very difficult. There's. They're two completely, one of my writers, Nora Nolan, who's my comedy writer, said, like, the only place we could exist is in this room. Like, there's no other place that we would exist together. There's no party that we would go together. There's no restaurant. There's no cultural point of reference that we would go to. But in that room, we're all talking the same language as Shiny Bell. So it's very fun. So in conclusion, comedy writers are still strange in 2023. Oh, it's still strange. Yeah, I think it's a different type of strange, though. Horror writers sure. know, you know, horror writers are have their own stuff going on. But I think horror writers, like if you ran into a horror writer in the street, you'd probably be have a more pleasant conversation. I think so. Well said. Well, Jeff, the compliments keep coming in closing. Thank, Thank you for the many years of great television. Thank you. And looking continue. forward to what's to come for me in the near future. All right. Thank you so much. Outro cast. <laughs>